I ask uh, unanimous consent to speak as if in morning business. Objection. Th thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I come to the floor today because of a new report that's come out uh, by the uh, chief economist of uh, Gallup, uh, the polling organization, dated today, February 15, 2012. Uh, and the headline is Health Costs, Government Regulations Curb Small Business Hiring. Madam President, as a member of the Senate, as well as a physician who's taking care of families across the state of Wyoming for about a quarter of a century, um, I'm concerned about jobs in this country, the economy of this country, and also the health care needs of the American people. Which is why week after week I come to the Senate floor with a doctor's second opinion about a health care law that uh, was supposed to give people what they were looking for, which was the care they need and a uh, from the doctor that they want at the cost they can afford. And, and regrettably, uh, what this president and this uh, Senate and this House at the time uh, controlled by the Democrats gave them was something very, very different. So the, the uh, result of this uh, report today, first line, U.S. small business owners who aren't hiring. And that's 85 percent of the 600 who were surveyed. Those small business owners who aren't hiring are being asked, why not? Well, nearly half of the small business owners point to the potential health care costs and government regulations as two big reasons. Those worried about the potential cost of health care, 80, I'm sorry, 48 percent. Those worried about new government regulations, 46 percent. But yet, when the president addressed the nation about health care, what he promised was that if people liked the care they had, they could keep it, and they would see their premiums drop by $2,500 a year a family. Now, when I have town hall meetings, I ask people how many believe that the health care costs are going to go up as a result of the health care law. Every hand goes up in the room. So the president has misled the American people, both in terms of the cost of the health care law as well, he misled the people in regard to regulations. He has stood in front of us in the, uh, in the House of Representatives as he gives the State of the Union and talks about removing expensive regulations. But that's not what the small business owners, those who create jobs in this country, it's not what they're finding. And then the President came out with his budget on Monday. It's his fiscal year 2013 budget. And uh, as I've said before, it is debt on arrival. The Obama budget spends $3.8 trillion. It runs a deficit of nearly a trillion. It raises taxes by nearly $1.9 trillion. It is the largest tax increase in the history of our country. And it is the fourth year in a row in, uh, to run a deficit of over a trillion dollars. And yet, the President goes on. To me, this is another clear example of President Obama's lack of leadership uh, and his bad habit of saying one thing and doing the exact opposite. Instead of saving money, which he promises, he just spends more. Instead of leveling with the American people about our fiscal future, he misleads them. So today I'd like to focus on one specific part of this budget. It's the part referring and regarding the President's health care law. As we all remember, the President promised the American people repeatedly, not just once, but repeatedly, that his health care reform wouldn't add a dime to the deficit. Two years later, the American people know that that's just not true. In fact, the President's new budget request asks for almost a billion dollars. A billion dollars. That's a thousand million. A billion dollars to fund his health care exchange. As the Hill newspaper recently reported, quote, the health reform law did not set aside any money specifically for the creation of the federal exchange. Let me repeat. The health care law did not set aside any money specifically for the creation of the federal exchange. Two years ago, did the president and my friends on the other side of the aisle seriously believe that Washington would be able to implement an unprecedented health care exchange for free? Would it just be free? Well, of course not. But the fact is, they knowingly, knowingly ignored the costs of the President's major new entitlement program, 
Why? Well, to try to score a political victory. What do we know about that victory? Well, we know that it is going to be bad for patients, bad for the providers, the nurses and doctors who take care of those patients, uh, and bad for the American taxpayers. Uh, we know that uh, the health care law, when it was crammed down the throats of the American people, forced through Congress, we know that it was unpopular then, and we know that it is, is even more unpopular today. You know, the whole time that the Democrats were drafting the bill behind closed doors right outside this Senate chamber, they knew that it would cost American taxpayers billions and billions of dollars. But they didn't want to admit it. They did not admit it. They refused to admit it. So they shaded the numbers, punted the problem down the road. So here we are now, two years later, and now they're finally trying to pay for it. It's listed in the president's budget. To make matters worse, the 2013 Obama budget wants to spend $290 million for, quote, consumer beneficiary education and outreach, close quote, within the exchanges. Well, what does this mean? Well, it basically means that they want to educate Americans about the exchanges in the health care law to the tune of $290 million of taxpayer dollars. Well, I think it is important to keep the American people informed, but my question is, why are President Obama and the Democrats in Congress focused on educating people about the health care law now? Why? Why didn't they take the time two years ago to educate the American people about the exchange and the costs of doing it? Well, we know the reason. The reason is because they knew that the American people would never support the new law, would never give up their freedoms. Instead, the White House and Democrats in Congress covered up the costs, drafted the bill behind closed doors, and jammed it through Congress. Well, now the financial bills are coming due. But, uh, Madam President, the checks are not in the mail. The United States is running out of money and running out of money fast. Instead of proposing a serious budget that would get our country back on the right track, the President has put forward not a serious budget, but a campaign document. No matter what he says, he is much more interested in winning votes now than in winning what he calls the future. Earlier this week, the President spoke to students at a community college, and he said that his budget would make their futures brighter. Well, I watched on television as he did that, and his words really couldn't have been further from the truth. The fact is that the President and his budget will make these students have to work even harder to pay off the nation's increasingly growing debt. These students and all future generations of Americans will pay for the choices that they never made and programs that they don't want. The new $800 million price tag on the exchanges is bad, and that is just the beginning. In fact, the uh, cost of the President's health care law is going to continue to skyrocket each and every year. When we're already $15 trillion in debt, we can't allow this health care law to move forward. When we look at trillion-dollar deficits for each of the four years of the Obama presidency, we say this cannot continue. And yet, when you look at this budget, it adds $11 trillion to the national debt over the next 10 years. We need to repeal this health care law. We need to replace it with something that will not make it harder for future generations to get out of debt, and we need to pass a law that will allow Americans to get what they wanted in the first place, the care that they need from a doctor that they want at a price they can afford. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.